Hey guys, I'm making this video to hopefully help anybody out there that's having the same problems I am with my air conditioning condensate pump. In my case, I've got the little giant model number 554401, also referred to as the VCMA 15. But regardless of your make and model, follow along and the fixes here should apply to most condensate pumps out there. If your problem is that your condensate pump keeps running and won't switch off, I've got a very simple very tiny fix to that problem. This is referred to as the condensate pump switch or condensate pump float switch. It's $30 on Amazon. I'll put a link to the specific one I bought for the little giant model that I have in the description below. I'll show you now what an easy plug and play fix this is. Swap out the old one for the new one. But after that, I'll go right into how to fix this switch if you don't want to spend the $30 and you want to fix it yourself. That's not too complicated either. To get access to the switch, you need to remove one Phillips screw at the back of the unit and then just pull the top cover this way to dislodge it from the two clips here and lift it up. Now we've exposed the internal workings and right down here is the float switch we need to replace. But before you go anywhere near this switch and start touching the wires to disconnect it, you got to go on over to wherever your switch to turn off your furnace is and turn it off. Even better, go back to the switch with your voltage tester. And make sure there's no current running to the machine before touching anything. Once you've ensured that there's no power running to the pump, we can go ahead and remove the switch. The switch is connected to this plastic housing, and that's what we're taking off. We can't just lift it up even though there's a pull tab on it. It needs to be pushed in first. So you push in on the tab and then lift up. It comes right out that way. And you can see the switch isn't permanently attached. It sits inside these two pins. There's corresponding holes inside of the switch. Once the switch is dislodged from the plastic housing, go ahead and pull on the tab, connector tabs off of the pins and your switch will be disconnected. And what a properly functioning switch should sound like as I put the microphone close by, And the reason your machine keeps pumping and won't shut off is because this switch is most likely done and there's no more audible click whenever that metal tab goes up and down. What's happening underneath the switch is the water reservoir will get filled up to a certain amount causing this float to rise. And when it rises to a certain point, it engages that metal tab on the switch. The audible clicking sound you heard isn't being caused by this metal rod. It's being caused by another piece of metal inside of this plastic housing. If you get in with a butter knife or any sharp steak knife and pry the plastic housing apart right here at this seam, you'll have access to the inside. Don't be intimidated by how tiny this switch is. There's only really six parts. You got that metal rod that was visible from the exterior and once you split the housing in half you have the two pins and they're just sitting in there so if one falls out that's fine you'll see inside of the plastic housing that there's clearly marked grooves for the pin to sit into so you can easily get that back into place just like so and then the six piece we'll zoom in is the piece you'll need to fix. Not replace, just fix. It's a tiny, thin piece of metal that you can tell is curved in such a manner that it's spring-loaded. We'll remove it from the housing and give you a closer look. It's a piece of plastic. This piece of plastic is what's connected to that metal rod right there. And when the rod goes up and down, activated by that float determined by the water level I showed you causes a spring-loaded action and that's where that audible click sound is from and you can see how the metal is loaded onto the plastic it's inserted into the two grooves of that plastic rod so if one was to slip out of place like so, 
you can see here as it focuses it's slipped out and there's no spring action and there's no audible clicking happening so if you remove this piece and you don't see that both tabs on this metal piece fit into the grooves at the center of this plastic rod just ever so gently position it back into place and then you have a spring-loaded action happening and that audible click sound it looks a bit wonky and not sitting straight because it needs to be loaded into the housing into the right grooves to keep it in place but once you've sorted that out you should have been successful in re repairing your switch but as I said, there's a link below for a $30 replacement switch if for some reason you just can't get it working again. And we're gonna sit it back into the housing, like so. And if I can do it with my dried out chubby fingers, you can too. As I said, don't be intimidated by the tiny size of the switch. Before you reconnect, the two halves of the plastic housing together. This metal tab needs to be put back into place. And to do that, you take the portion that has the connector pins on and you get this rod inserted by placing it over top perpendicularly and a quarter turn rotation gets it put back into place. And there's two pins at the end and they get inserted into the holes that are in the plastic housing like so see there's a hole if i can get the light properly there's a hole right there and that's where the pin goes into place and there's an identical hole on the other half of the plastic housing that the other side will fit into There. I apologize, I wasn't able to keep it in focus the entire process, but just to show you that with my chubby, dry, and cracked fingers, I was able to manipulate this switch and get that inside piece of metal fixed. So if I can do it, you can too. Don't be intimidated by how small and tiny this switch is. And now if we can hear the audible click, and every time there is a click like so that little piece we fixed creates a connection between the two metal connectors that are connected to the wiring and break or open the circuit to turn the pump on or off. So that's it. If your pump won't shut off, I showed you how to install a new $30 switch off Amazon. And if you want to save that $30, I've also showed you, how to open this bad boy up and fix the part of the switch that's malfunctioning. So that's it for this video. If what I showed here helped you out in any way, please do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to my channel. That'll be a huge help. And thanks for watching.